in English literature uh, in this module, we will see how we can study gender through English literature. In English literature, we can study it in three areas or three domains. First, how male and female authors choose language, their style. Number two, the gender system of the language in which they are writing. And number three, translation from one language to the other, literary translation. Each of these three areas will be discussed in different modules. Here we will know about what style is. In common talk, everyday talk, we often use the word style. I don't like his style of dressing. We mean manner of dressing. I like elegant style of your house. I like the design, the architecture of your house. She started off in a fine style, for example, in a performance, at stage, etc. So here, another example, here one can eat in style, in a non-traditional way. So these are different meanings of style in our common conversation. We are talking about shape, manner, performance that is different, that is distinct, that makes someone different from others and it leaves some effect. Effect means it influences people around us. Uh, may make them happy, it may make them sad. This is called effect. So, things are persons have style when there are two things. Number one, different, special, and innovative, and when they are appealing. Similarly, now we apply this idea to language. We use language for a particular purpose. That purpose may be to convey, to communicate some information, to inform. That purpose may be to entertain. That purpose may be to report something, to express our feelings, our opinions, to convince people of our views, etc., etc. To achieve our purpose, we choose specific words, specific grammar. Number one and number two, the choice of language leaves some effect. That is our purpose. So now this choice of language for a particular purpose, this is called language style. The writer, for example, may want to create effect of sadness, happiness, critical outlook on some issue, on some social issue, on issue of marriage, on issue of joblessness, on any social issue. These effects depend on his intentional, careful, conscious selection of words, metaphors, class types, sentence structure, etc. For example, to understand the idea of language style of a writer, we take one example from Mark Twain. Mark Twain is pen name of 
Samuel Clemens. He is American. And uh, know that for his style, for his humorous style, he is known as Shakespeare of American literature. I could have uh, shown you his image, his picture, or some biographical note. But see, uh, there was issue of copyright uh, for taking his image. This is an excerpt from his uh, prose essay, Damned Human Race. See what he says about man. Man is the only slave. In our day, he is always some man slave. Slave for wages and does that man's work in return of wages. The higher animals are the only ones who exclusively do their work and provide their own living. Man is animal and other animals are higher animals. And see how he compares both on the basis of slavery. He says, man remains always slave, but other animals, they are not slave. They work for their own living, for their own existence. There is another paragraph from the same author. The higher animals engage in individual fights. In jungle, you know, many animals fight for food, for mating, for other things like that. But never in organized masses, never in form of armies. And what man does? Man is the only animal that deals in that atrocity of atrocities that is called war. It means he wants to convey the idea that only man does work and it is the thing which even higher animals don't do. So here is a task about these paragraphs so that I may ensure that you understand what language style is. Guess which words create the following effects? These are common words which we use in everyday conversation. But the choice of these words in hands of Mark Twain convey an effect you will tell me in this task that which of these words create what type of effect on you as listener. Hatred for war, humans are more cruel than animals. Another effect, man is always slave. Man is still a slave of man. So which of these effects are created in what words, in which choice of words in these paragraphs? You will note it down and discuss with your other course fellows. We conclude, we write for a purpose, whether we are writing literature or non-literature. We write for a purpose. We write for some reader, for some audience. Why? To influence that person, to leave some effect on that person. And we are successful in leaving that effect by choosing particular words and particular grammar. In other words, by adopting an appropriate style.